Hi, today we're going to talk about acid reflux, its causes, the risk factors that lead to acid reflux, and its many complications. Acid reflux is a common complaint that patients go to see their primary care doctors for. And acid reflux is the condition in which acid regurgitates from the stomach into the esophagus, which is that tube that joins the mouth to the stomach. You can see on the diagram this tube right here running from the mouth to the stomach. This is the esophagus. Now at the lower end of the esophagus, at the junction of the esophagus and the stomach, is the lower esophageal sphincter. The lower esophageal sphincter is a ring of muscle that acts as a valve to control the movement of food from the esophagus into the stomach. And when it is closed, food cannot enter the stomach. Or when it is not functioning properly, then food can move from the stomach back into the esophagus, causing what we know as reflux and acid reflux. Now, when this muscle malfunctions, then reflux causes the symptoms that we call heartburn and the other symptoms that accompany acid reflux disease. If acid reflux disease happens more than twice a week, this is what is called GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. So gastroesophageal reflux disease is just reflux disease that occurs more frequently than twice per week. There are many risk factors for gastroesophageal reflux disease and for acid reflux. And these include uh, such factors as being obese or eating foods close to bedtime or eating a heavy meal, large portions or eating large portions and lying down immediately after eating as well as such conditions as smoking, eating spicy fatty foods. Fatty foods and spicy foods is a common cause of gastroesophageal reflux disease because many of the fast foods that we consume are fatty and fried, as well as consuming certain fruit, fruits such as citrus fruit, tomatoes, or other acidic fruit can cause or predispose us to acid reflux. Smoking also affects the function of the lower esophageal sphincter and can predispose us to acid reflux and the symptoms of acid reflux. What are the causes of acid reflux? The causes of acid reflux are many and injury to the esoph esophagus injury that may arise for instance if someone inadvertently drinks acid or lye these caustic uh, solutions can damage the esophagus and damage the lower esophageal sphincter leading to acid reflux other causes include uh, genetics and acid reflux and acid reflux disease runs in certain families and this is based on hereditary factors that predispose these individuals to suffering from acid reflux. Obesity is probably the most common cause for acid reflux in the population of the world. And obesity promotes acid reflux by increasing the intra-abdominal pressure, which exerts a pressure on the stomach wall pressing food and acidic solutions into the esophagus where it causes damage. The stomach contains hydrochloric acid and hydrochloric acid is a strong acid that the stomach has adapted to tolerate whereas the esophagus and the mucosa of the esophagus is unprotected and when acid regurgitates from the stomach back into the esophagus, it can damage the mucosa of the esophagus causing acid reflux symptoms such as heartburn. Another frequent cause of heartburn and of acid reflux is hiatal hernia. And hiatal hernia de deserves special mention because hiatal hernia could be both a cause of acid reflux as well as a consequence of acid reflux. 
acid reflux caused by hiatal hernia is a result of the damage and the malfunction of the lower esophageal sphincter that hiatal hernia causes and this can lead to acid buildup in the hernia which can lead to acid buildup in the esophagus and this can cause the symptoms of acid reflux such as heartburn now what is a hiatal hernia hiatal hernia is just a hernia a protrusion of the stomach wall into the, the thoracic cavity through the orifice that exists in the diaphragm and today scientists recognize that hiatal hernia plays a central role in the symptoms of acid reflux and in the causes of acid reflux it can also result from acid reflux because the abdominal pressure that is caused by abdominal obesity which is one of the leading causes of acid reflux can cause changes in the lower esophageal sphincter and changes in the mucosa of the lower esophagus that can lead to hiatal hernia and cause hiatal hernia you know a frequent cause of acid reflux is pregnancy and pregnancy causes acid reflux because of the hormonal changes that take place in pregnancy which affect the motility of the gastrointestinal tract and by slowing down the gastrointestinal tract it affects the ability of the lower esophageal sphincter to close and prevent the back up of food the regurgitation of food and acid into the esophagus and this leads to symptoms apart from this the increased abdominal pressure that results from the enlarged uterus also increases pressure in the inter intra abdominal cavity that presses on the stomach and leads to regurgitation of food into the lower esophagus causing acid reflux so pregnancy is a frequent cause of acid reflux a, another uh, very frequent cause of acid reflux is lower esophageal sphincter relaxations and these are generally physiologic so that when food approaches the stomach in the esophagus the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes and allows food to move from the esophagus into the stomach in some cases in persons who suffer from acid reflux this is not the case and the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes inappropriately and at these times when it relaxes without there being food in transit from the esophagus to the stomach food and acid can regurgitate can back up into the esophagus and lead to acid reflux age is also a factor that can cause a GERD and acid reflux and the older we get the more likely it is that the lower esophageal sphincter will uh, malfunction and will lead to gastroesophageal reflux disease now the incidence of acid reflux is on the rise and it is particularly on the rise in the western hemisphere along with this there has been an increase in the incidence of esophageal adenocarcinoma the cancer that most frequently occurs in the esophagus the incidence of GERD is also increasing in infants and from 2000 to 2005 there was a threefold increase in the incidence of GERD and acid reflux in infants at the same time from 2000 to 2005 there was an increase a three a 30 percent to 50 percent increase in the incidence of GERD and acid reflux in children as well as in adolescents now there are geographical differences as well that exist in the incidence and the occurrence of GERD and acid reflux and what we see is that in the West GERD and acid reflux and the complications of GERD and acid reflux are far more frequent and increasing steadily the incidence of EAC esophageal adenocarcinoma is growing at an alarming rate in the United States and in Great Britain and in Australia and differences are also seen in gender 
as far as the incidence of the um, complications of acid reflux and GERD so that as far as erosive esophagitis is concerned a 60% of all the cases of erosive esophagitis occur in males and 70% of all the cases of Barrett's esophagus which is a precancerous condition occurs in males and 80% of all the cases of esophageal adenocarcinoma occurs in males as well so we see there's a skewing of the complications of, of acid reflux towards the male sex. There are also racial differences that we see in the incidence of complications of acid reflux. And in North America, the Caucasian race is disproportionately affected by esophageal adenocarcinoma not a complication from acid reflux. The cause of this change, of this rapid growth and in frequency of acid reflux is still not fully explained, although scientists believe that abdominal obesity may be the underlying factor. Abdominal obesity occurs more frequently in the West than in the East, and that may explain the geographical differences that we see, as well as the fact that abdominal obesity occurs more frequently in men than in women, and this would explain the gender differences that we see in the incidence of these conditions. There is also a difference in the frequency with which abdominal obesity occurs among the different races and abdominal obesity occurs with greater frequency in Caucasian Americans than in African Americans and this may explain the racial differences that exist in GERD and acid reflux complications. Now what are some of the symptoms of acid reflux and GERD? And patients who suffer from acid reflux most frequently complain of heartburn and heartburn as we know is a burning sensation a pain in the thoracic cavity behind the breastbone. Patients also complain of conditions such as feeling as if food is stuck behind the breastbone or they complain of having to clear their throats frequently or a burning sensation in the throat. Some patients develop hoarseness and in other cases they have chronic cough. Now the symptoms of acid reflux can be separated into two groups esophageal symptoms as well as extra esophageal symptoms and esophageal symptoms are those symptoms that are directly related to the esophagus whereas extra esophageal symptoms are symptoms that occur outside of the esophagus such as chronic cough as i mentioned or asthma or ent infections or dental problems decay of the teeth these are all symptoms and consequences of acid reflux and uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. What are the complications that we need to be concerned about in acid reflux? And one of the most worrying symptoms is bleeding from the esophagus. And quite often that bleeding from the esophagus is what we call occult bleeding, meaning that it is not visible to the eye and primary care physicians would probably pick that up when they do a stool test looking for blood occult blood in the stool frequently these patients have anemia that is not explained and searches are conducted looking for a source of their anemia and quite often the esophagus is overlooked as a source of possible bleeding the bleeding can lead to iron deficiency and the iron deficiency that results can lead to anemia, iron deficiency anemia. Above and beyond that, ulcerations can occur in the esophagus, as well as metaplasia, which is the mucosa of the esophagus changes from the normal mucosa to a different type of mucosa that predisposes patients to cancer. And this is what we call Barrett's esophagus. Of course, cancer can 
can also present as a complication of acid reflux, especially in the setting of Barrett's esophagus. And the most common cancer, which is the esophageal adenocarcinoma, usually presents in the seventh or eighth decade of life. Strictures can also arise, and strictures are narrowing of the esophagus, which normally results from the formation of scar tissue in the esophageal lumen. As we can see, acid reflux is a complex and complicated condition and there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. In fact, poorly treated or inadequately managed acid reflux can have serious complications. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel and visit this channel in the future for more useful tips on healthful living. Thank you for watching.